Howdy again everybody, Boyd here with you and welcome back. This is part two of our dual truck build up here on the channel. And we left off with our last video uh, working on the uh, tractor part. Uh, and we've got a lot of work done on the chassis and the cab and everything on that. We showed you some of that. But now we're uh, showing you this kit that we've picked up to uh, start working on our uh, tanker trailer that goes with this vehicle. Now you can see this picture in this shot is of the Dodge L700 tanker. Uh, this is a kit that we were talking about. Um, we had a couple of our modeling friends out there suggest uh, maybe trying this kit because it is a uh, short, what they call a shorty trailer. It's not a full length uh, regular trailer, so that's kind of in the ballpark. And um, you can see by looking at it though that the basic configuration of it, uh, about the only thing that's close to what the uh, tanker looks like on the dual truck is the curvature of the top of the uh, tanker there but the sides are completely wrong we have these big ribs that are on here that are not right and a few other things but uh, I think we're going to go ahead and try to make it work guys I think I uh, uh, can maneuver some of these parts around and get this to work and we were going to need a uh, chassis and uh, rear axles and all that anyway for uh, a trailer if we if we decided to completely build it from scratch so I think we're going to go ahead and work with this uh, now, like I said, the, since there's no kit available for the uh, trailer itself that's an, a, you know, an exact replica of it in 1 25th scale, you're either going to have to do something like this or you're going to have to completely scratch build it. So we're going to try this first and hopefully everything will work out, guys. I've uh, been looking at the parts here a little bit and uh, just kind of going through in my head what I think we might be able to do here. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to take the main parts that we're going to use out of the box. I'm not going to do a kit review on this thing or anything. Um, there's probably out, somebody out there that's already done that. And uh, Chris Cortell over at Classic Plastic is actually building this, uh, this chassis and this cab up for this Dodge L700 for his uh, race hauler that he's working on anyway. So you guys can check that out over there. Um, so let's come back here in just a second. I'll have some parts put out and we'll start talking about our plans everybody so we'll see you with that be right back all right so what I've done here is I've uh, taken the main parts of the tank assembly out of our Dodge L700 tanker kit now and I've mocked it together with some tape as you can see here and uh, just getting a look at it overall to see if our length of the tanker is going to be good and what we're looking at for the general shape of it and I'm pretty pleased the length of it's going to be really good it looks just about spot on. The curvature of the top part of the tank here is really good. It looks really close to what the uh, tank looked like in the dual truck. Uh, but we do have some issues here that are going to have to be dealt with on these parts to get it a little bit closer. Um, and we can see that we've got this uh, rib that's located along the side and this rib that wraps around the center here, which is to connect the two parts together. We have, if we want to work with this, we're going to have to completely remove that, shave that off, because we we're supposed to have a completely uh, smooth surface on the top. There is a uh, spine that kind of runs all the way down the top of it, two individual uh, rails uh, with an open center where we have three uh, sort of hatches on the top and uh, with an end cap on each end that kind of blends in. So we could, we could scratch that up pretty easily. Um, but what I've got here is I've got this tanker actually sitting on here backwards uh, because uh, looking at the parts here, this is actually the rear bulkhead that comes with the uh, the tanker kit here and you can see it's got these big op this big opening here there's two opening doors and there's this recessed uh, toolbox area here at the rear and uh, that's completely wrong for what we need for our vehicle here for the dual truck and also it's completely flat and we need to have a little bit of a curvature to it when I look at it here in the rear uh, you can see we've got this sort of tapered uh, rear curve on here which is much closer all we'll have to do is we'll just have to shave this uh, rib off of here. We're supposed to be nice and flat right here. So we can work with that by just simply turning this around. It doesn't matter. They've got a little boss here on the bottom where the uh, hitch is supposed to be located, but we can easily mount another one up here at the front and uh, work with that. So that's to start with. Now the issue here is that what we have with the dual truck is we have this um, line that's right here that starts. You can see the curvature of the tank comes down and then we have this sort of side skirt that goes on here that uh, runs along the side of the tanker and then right about uh, midway back or so uh, it drops down and then comes back you know fairly low and then it has a wheel well opening here 
uh, for both of the dual wheels and then it sort of comes to the rear and tapers off. So we would have to do that out of sheet styrene which is no problem. But the issue here is that we've got this uh, uh, area here that's uh, the tanker is actually sitting sort of too high on top of this frame. If we shaved this entire lower curvature off of here and brought this down it's all going to be too wide uh, to fit the top or to fit the bottom of the chassis. So uh, looking at this we're going to have to do quite a bit of work making some kind of a rib here that runs along the side and then uh, put our uh, uh, and make a filler panel here at the front for both sides so you can't see the taper. Now at the way they have this set up in the front on the dual truck is that there's a uh, curved bulkhead that kind of curves like this and there's a there's a recessed area back underneath it here where it's sort of shaved away and then it kind of drops down a little bit further back so we would have to shave some of this away down here we're only going to be able to shave so far because we've got to have a structure underneath of there for our hitch to be located um, so uh, I haven't been able to find any really close detailed pictures of um, the uh, structure that's underneath of this thing it's almost going to have to be uh, left the way it is so we don't uh, you know remove our main kind of support area right there so we're gonna if we work with this trailer we're gonna have to make a few compromises and right now I'm kinda leaning with working with it because I'm, what I'm looking at um, scratch building the entire thing now uh, it would be a long drawn out kind of a thing and I don't wanna you know spend a month working on this project so we're probably gonna make some compromises here I'm pretty sure I can get the uh, the side skirts here to look pretty decent and especially the wheel well openings uh, and we're going to build a, uh, a filler panel here in the rear it's got a sort of a flared look that comes down and sort of tapers out and kind of comes out and then we have a squared off bottom with the uh, a wrap around kind of a bumper on the bottom of there and it just, just has a couple tail lights on each side and if we remove this rib right here we'll get really close to that so I think we're going to be okay towards the rear that's no problem but uh, up here at the front it's going to be a little bit different story it's a uh, it's going to have a little bit of, of this um, uh, curvature that we're talking about here we normally you wouldn't want to see this this reel at here that we're I'm pointing at should actually be kind of up here a little bit closer to look more correct and I'm looking at uh, you can't see it here but in the background I'm looking at it on my computer monitor there's some actual drawings maybe I can tilt the camera up here for you and you can see what I'm looking at uh, and I'll zoom in on this for you here hopefully it doesn't wash out too much uh, but you can see I'm looking at the uh, the gentleman's actually got some drawings of the uh, trailer uh, that he's posted in uh, 1 50th scale so you could you could scale these up no problem if you were gonna completely build this thing from scratch but you can see what I'm kinda talking about here you, you've got that rib that's located on the side of the trailer that's right up there on the curvature of the uh, bottom part there and uh, the uh, rib that we have in place on our trailer is is you know slightly higher than that so we're gonna have to figure out what we're gonna do with that hey 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 everybody here we are again and I've been um, working pretty hard on this uh, working out pretty good too we're getting our uh, shapes created on this like we were talking about and just trying to utilize everything that exists on this trailer uh, to get it shaped closer to what we were wanting to do with the dual truck now first thing you'll see is up front here we talked about swapping ends here uh, so we no longer had the uh, curved uh, front end on this like we did on the rear so uh, I recreated this panel here I just uh, made a template and um, cut it out of some 030 sheet styrene and just worked it on there and uh, we've got it all ready to be puttied and everything we'll get rid of this nasty seam and get this all smoothed out there's also some kind of minor uh, rib depressions that I can see in the molding here that I'm gonna have to um, get those sanded out too but what we do what we've done now is we've got this entire thing glued together you remember we talked about this big um, overlapping uh, ridge that was here we've completely grinded that one away and then here at the back we've completely grinded that one away as well the one that used to be running right across here in the middle the narrow one like this we got rid of that and uh, down on the bottom now I've got this all figured out as far as how I want to set this up um, looking at the pictures of the truck you have kind of the full half of the truck here towards the rear because we have or, or the tanker trailer I'm sorry 
uh, because we have these uh, long extended side skirts that come down. This whole rear section here is kind of boxed in. Once you build your side skirt, we've made a little bulkhead here for when our bottom panel goes on that we can uh, lower this down in there and we'll trim it exactly to fit and that will connect to our side skirts and then we'll have that whole uh, section there kind of boxed in where you can only see it you know if the vehicle's totally upside down which is the way it looks on the film and uh, up here at the front you can see it takes this dramatic step and it gets kind of narrower we have this beam up here and so all we have is the tank itself riding you can barely see it they have some some rib support ribs that you can see if you look at it in the shadows um, and they're a little bit more rounded and conforming to the tank but these will do uh, this is the actual uh, original piece to the bottom half of the tank that I heavily modified here and you can see what I've done is I originally the kit comes with these really thick outer frame rails that go along the sides here you put them on in two segments we weren't going to be using those because we're using the uh, smooth uh, you know the side panels the side skirts we're talking about that will go on just below that little line right there and blend that you know blend that in and um, so what we're able to do here now is I've shaved this down a little bit, I've reshaped it a little bit, and I took those rails that we had that were going to go on the outside, and I shaved uh, some of the inner ribs down here. You can see I used heavy styrene to uh, uh, glue this whole thing together. I put bulkheads behind everything so it's really super strong. And um, before I put all this and seal all this up, I've got this setting with some uh, uh, CA glue right now, holding it kind of, you know, uh, a lot of people tell you when you're doing scratch building that CA works really good because you can, you can temporarily tack things in place and test fit and uh, you know put things together rapidly and um, but you want to go back and usually you want to go back and reinforce it so before we close all this up I'll be using some five minute epoxy I'll go around the seams I'll go around the gap in here all the little places and uh, this will be really strong but adding these frame rails on the inside too gave this forward area uh, added strength which we needed and you can actually maybe see through the plastic here where I've got this heavy uh, this is a 060 uh, uh, sheet styrene that's in here so it's really strong so we don't have to worry about that so what we did is we flipped these rails on their edge now so we had both I had solved two things here that I was trying to come up with I needed a filler panel so I didn't have a, a big gap in between these uh, sides where if you looked up in there you would see you know just a void uh, and then we got our spacing that we needed so now we can use this original bottom part I shaved off the um, it originally had part of the, the lower half of the tank on it, but it was much wider and it uh, was going to interfere with this whole thing. And So I shaved those off and now what we have is we have this that will sit right on this little um, those ledges that we created there. And from the side profile, we're going to be adding our, uh, you know, there's a little beam that goes across. I'm going to go to the hobby store tomorrow and I'm going to see if I can find some uh, evergreen that's already sort of the right width and the right thickness and we'll just have a whole length of it running back. And then our side skirt goes on to that. Our side skirt starts to taper in like right here. It has a little bit of a radius. It comes down and it's squared off and then it comes back and then we have our uh, wheel well openings over here. So get a little closer to the camera here and keep going off camera for you guys. So um, that's going to work out fantastic. And we have it all figured out. Now our hitch, like we talked about here, it was originally in this location. So we can just sand that off or grind that off and we'll just glue the uh, the hitch assembly on up here and it's going to line up perfect with the ride height on the truck which I've already done, done some kind of testing here should show you the uh, the uh, tanker here from what I can tell the beginning of the uh, tanker starts about right here and it should be uh, the top of the tanker should be just about even with the roof of the truck and that's what we're looking for so we're going to be really good here by the time we get our um, hitch platform built up onto our truck and our little pedestal down here on the bottom it's going to line up just perfect and it should sit really nice now what I'm going to do to make double sure is I'll glue all my running gear on here and get this all so it's set the correct way that's the rear axles the springs and everything and I'm going to use the I mentioned earlier in the first video that I've got an extra one of these uh, California hauler kits so I'm going to use the rear uh, uh, tires and wheels off of that so it matches the truck and uh, then we're going to uh, use the axles that come with this uh, kit, the D700. So then uh, we'll have that setting when it, at its proper level. Then we need to go up here and make sure that whatever we build for our hitch is going to be uh, level so we don't have the trailer kind of doing this number or doing this number. So it's important that we put the uh, running gear there on the back first because we're not just building something straight out of the kit anymore. We're, we're, we've modified everything. So this is going to work out really cool. Now here on the bottom you can see, whoops, at the front, 
Um, I've got this so it slides right up in here. So all I'll have to do now is make a small little filler panel out of st uh, sheet styrene, which will really be easy to do. and Just fill that in. And uh, our little bulkhead will go right back here, for uh, which is cut. And uh, we'll put that on, and that'll make our square for the beginning of our boxed-in section for our uh, side skirts. And we'll have this made, guys, made in the shade. So everything that, all the accessories that go to this trailer can still go on underneath here. You know, the, the uh, wheel stands, uh, anything we want to put down there, all that can go down there. So that's all working out fantastic. Uh, one more thing, one more big modification on this uh, is that uh, I was talking about earlier, we have to do this mod back here. Let me get the cab out of the way before I knock something off of it again. Um, we've got this rear section here that's, uh, if you look at it from the side profile, it's uh, perfectly up and down. It has a little bit of the wrap around like it should, but it's uh, perfectly up and down. And I talked earlier about whether I wanted to really get into modifying that or not. Well, now that I'm having a go at some of this stuff up here, and I completely uh, remade and scratch made this uh, forward panel here, and it worked out really good. I didn't even use, a, a, you know, the, the plans or anything. I just laid it down on its end before I cut it and traced it out, and then uh, added a little bit on the ends because I knew the radius it had to make was going to have to uh, be a little bit, you know, longer. So I just made them extra big and didn't worry about it being perfect. So once I glued it all on, I just worked my way around and glued it all on flush and got it, you know, tacked it down with my CA glue one spot at a time until I got it totally flush and, and, and blended in as close as I could. Then I just went with my grinding tool and just grind it all off all the excess. So uh, it made that real, I didn't have to cut it out exact doing it that way. And it worked really great. It, it made up, you know, perfect contour to the top. You can kind of see a little, you know, stuff going on here. But once I putty this and smooth all this out, it's going to look perfect. And so um, we've got this uh, curve section correct up here. But now in the back, you know, the, the actual truck has a sloped tail. And I talked about, you know, we're going to have to make a flat panel that's going to have to go kind of something like this. Uh, that meets our uh, our side skirt here, which is the rear part of that. You can see it's tapered back just the least little bit, you know, a couple of degrees. And um, if we do that like this straight up, then we're, what we're going to have here is we just, uh, what I would do is I would use this template here because you can see that the... Uh, the rear part of the tank on the on the truck in the movie it has a little line right here where like the tank itself is supposed to be you know sticking out just a little bit past uh, this this uh, skirt right here that's on the back so um, if you just blend that in flat it wouldn't look right um, so what we're going to do then is we're going to have to shave uh, we're going to have to use this template that we made earlier uh, which is the exact shape of our uh, section here our cross section and we're going to have to shave off uh, some of the bottom area here on the on the uh, tank to get rid of the curvature in it because this piece is not supposed to be curved. It's it's a flat piece with the tank uh, kind of coming out, you know, something like that. And if we try to do it just straight up like that, you can see we'll get a curve on there, and it and it's just not going to look right. It's not going to blend in right on the sides. If you look at it here, then you'd see it from the side where the the tail lights would look like you know you could see them too much. It should be uh, flat as far as I can tell. So that, uh, that means that we'll have to modify that bottom area anyway. So I thought, well, I guess if we're going to do that, then what we can also do is we can shave the top here and shave that back just a little bit so we can get the whole back half of this uh, having the uh, correct slope that comes down. And uh, I'll do the same thing that I did on the front section here. Uh, the nice part about that is that the way they have it uh, done, we don't have this radius here anymore. They've just got it cut off like a, you know, like a, I don't know what you'd call it, like a slice of bread or something. But it's just like it's been shaved straight off and it goes straight across. So we don't have to worry about uh, this massive curve or anything here. So we can we can knock that down and, and uh, make a new uh, bulkhead to glue on here really easily then. And we can take into account then when we've got to notch out the bottom half too so we have the curve and we don't have, uh, uh, you know, our, our rear bulkhead here being bowed like that so all right back for the finale of the video here guys uh, uh, many hours later here and you can see how our trailer looks now after we did all those modifications that we were just talking about I'm pretty pleased guys I'm really uh, kind of in disbelief a little bit that this uh, trailer is actually the trailer that we started out with um, all that scratch work and all that uh, uh, planning and everything we did there it, it uh, really worked out great and uh, We've got the look of the trailer really close to the way it looks in the film. As I mentioned, I've still got to do the the uh, main sort of spine there going across the top. 
uh, and it sort of has these little caps here at the end that uh, have to be blended in at the front and the rear. But we'll, uh, we'll do that when we go to the hobby store and pick those up. Uh, you can see here at the back we've got our bumper on there and we've got those little extra panels we put on, that little piece of uh, filler sprue right there that we put in. And we've got our running gear uh, put on here off of the uh, uh, Dodge L700 trailer kit. But I wound up using the extra wheels and tires from my extra California hauler kit so they matched the uh, wheels and tires that are on the tractor here. So um, that worked out pretty good. We've put the filler panels in here on the frame. They haven't been weathered yet, but I'll do that. And then we worked out our hitch here on the bottom. Worked out really great. And you can see just standing back here that the uh, trailer sits nice and level. I put, you know, I just kept making, I scratch built the hitch and I just uh, kept shaping that until I got the height exactly right on that and the placement between the wheels where it should sit. And uh, got all that lined up really good. You can see we put in our cabinet doors there on the sides. We cut those out of some sheet styrene and did those up. And uh, I fired off uh, an email to my good friend Jerry at HDA Model Works and see if he can work up some uh, decals uh, for this for us and he's going to work on that so I'm uh, glad we'll be uh, hopefully getting those. Uh, those are the big flammable words there that go on the sides and the big flammable word here on the back and a couple other little markings. Also going to try to do some of the license plates on the truck. Um, back here we've still got to do all of our, you know, add our tail lights. We'll probably make a little scratch built license plate bracket there. It was actually sitting on the truck kind of crooked and kind of, you know, bent and beat up. So we'll try to replicate that too. But like I said, overall, I'm really happy with this, guys. Um, I'll pick it up and show you the bottom of it. You can see we boxed all this in here. We've got our running gear all in place there. And we made a box section just like it would have. Now, uh, they probably would have had that a little deeper on the inside because there would have been some actual cabinets in there, but I'm not going to worry about that. You can see what we've got going on up here. Uh, we use that lower part of the uh, uh, original tank that we talked about. And um, so, yeah, I'm just really, really happy with this. We've got some details to do here. Uh, once we get everything kind of uh, uh, figured out what we're going to do on the, you know, on the spine on the top and everything, and uh, when I get close to doing the final paint on this, I'll add all the little small details. I've got a nice little ladder that's going to go on here. I've got a couple handles here and there. And then all the stuff needs to go on the cab still. We've got to put all the uh, mirrors and uh, we're going to scratch build some handles and stuff here and there. You can see we don't have the uh, correct hood yet. We're waiting for that to come. But since I was uh, kind of waiting around here, I just did an experiment on this uh, kit supplied part. And uh, I was trying to capture the look of those beat up pink fenders and I think that came out pretty good too. I got all the splattering and the chip rusted edges and everything going on on there and some streaks on the hood and stuff so it was nice to practice on that a little bit and get ready for the real thing when it gets here and uh, so yeah when we add everything onto this in the end guys I think it's going to come out um, unless you're a total diehard uh, dual fanatic uh, this will pass in most cases I think uh, so I'm really happy with that. Uh, uh, like I said, not being able to get the tanker and having to work with what we had and versus completely scratch building it. I think we came out a winner here, guys. I'm really happy. Um, like I said, this is going to be uh, really neat to have this on display. I've always wanted to have this and um, wanted to have it in this scale too, you know, pretty big size. So it's really, really cool. And I'm going to have fun again doing all the weathering and all the gook and all the sludge and everything that goes all over the trailer. we got these big white stains that kind of run down the sides and everything. And I might add a few little airline connectors or something in here for some detail. And um, we've also got the jack stand that goes underneath of here we can use from the original uh, L700 kit. We'll put that in place. But uh, really happy you're here with this, guys. So like I said, I hope you're enjoying it as much as I have. I've really been having fun. This is a little bit of a challenge. I haven't done much of this kind of work before. So it's, uh, it's uh, pretty satisfying when it worked out. So all right, guys, that's going to be a wrap for this one. Uh, We'll be back with more. Part three will show uh, the paint uh, on the trailer, and then we're going to start putting some of the details on there. I'll probably have the spine done by then, and then we're going to take you through the, uh, when we get the hood in here, uh, we'll do the modifications that we talked about to the grill, and then we're going to show you how we do the uh, uh, weathering and painting on that since we missed that on the actual cab itself. I'll go back and show that on the hood. and. Um, We'll be getting close to the end then, guys, so I'm really happy. I'm going to make up some kind of stand for this to sit on, and I'm going to do some sounds for it like I did on the Mad Max Interceptor 2. I've got another one of those uh, little big dog sound boards that I'll incorporate into this whole thing. we got to get Dennis Weaver saying, 
you know, some of his stuff from the film. Uh, how can he, you know, how can he, he can't beat me on the grade, you know, how can he go so fast? That'll be pretty cool. And then some of the sounds of the truck, of course, and all that. So that'll be fun, guys. All right, we're going to wrap this one up. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time. And until we do, like always, happy modeling, you guys. Take care.